Hey, it's January 2013, and this is what I'm up to these days in the DIY Recording Equipment Laboratory. Um, I'm working on a headphone amplifier kit for the studio. Um, these are the prototypes I've built so far. And before I show you these and tell you where I'm headed with this kit, uh, let me answer your pressing question, which I'm sure is, why another headphone amp? There's like a billion and one out there already. The answer is, I don't think there's one that's quite as awesome and as powerful and as affordable as I'd like to see. And that's especially tailored for the recording studio or the portable recording rig. Um, so I have a couple really specific design goals in mind for this project. Um, the first being, of course, it has to sound awesome. Uh, the second is I would really like to get the kit in under $30 for the whole shebang. Um, I would like it to be powered on a Walwart DC power supply, something cheap and easy that you can plug into the wall. Don't have to worry about building a power supply. And I would also like it to um, have plenty of power. Now that is the sticking point for me for what's, what's out there mostly these days in the affordable range is that most of them don't really have enough power to give, for example, drummers the crazy amount of volume that they would want while, while maintaining a really clean um, signal. So let me show you where I started. The first thing, uh, first one I built here is called the Seamoy. Uh, you've probably heard of this before if you've looked up DIY headphone amps. This is something really simple. People build them in Altoid tins a lot. Um, so this, let me show you what this is all about. It's barely even des a design. It's, as you can see, very few components. Um, this is an op amp, a dual op amp, so one per channel. An op amp is just a little integrated amplifier on a uh, little semiconductor here, and this is I'll walk you through the entire circuit here. It's very easy. Uh, input, go to my volume control, go to the amplifier, it amplifies the signal, and out through the output, and I've got my jack for a battery here. This thing sounds awesome. I was really surprised. Um, with just even any decent headphone amplifier, this is one from the Japan radio company, it was 30 cents. This circuit sounds great. Um, I've done a couple mixes through this, it's awesome. The problem is, it doesn't have a ton of power. If you're trying to amplify headphones like these, um, these are 600 ohm, 600 ohm he headphone amplifier. Pa. These are 600 ohm headphones, which means they're pretty high impedance, which means they don't need a ton of power to get really loud and clean. So for this, the Seamoy is great. On the other hand, when you plug in something more serious like these, like these grottos that I like to mix with, these suck up power like nothing else. There are 32 ohms, which means they're very low impedance, which means they need a lot more power than your 600 ohm phones to get to the same volume with a clean signal. So, I threw away the Seamoy, moving forward to something with more power. Um, I went a little overboard and I got a chip that is called the TDA2822M or something. It's one watt per channel. That's a ton of power for headphones. Um, and same thing, really simple circuit. I go in, I go to the chip, it gives me a watt, it gives me some gain, and I go out and I have my battery hookup. Super simple, you know, this could be well under $30 for a kit. So far we're looking great. Big problem. This thing is not stable, meaning it, it'll oscillate, it won't behave very well at anything under 20 decibels of gain, which is a ton, a ton of gain. Um, so you, you're gonna deafen yourself with this thing very easily. Um, it's also a little bit noisy. This thing's really meant to drive little speakers. Headphones are little speakers, but they're too little for this. So great chip, overkill for our application. Moving on. Um, the next thing I built uh, is something very hi-fi. This uh, design is called the Objective 2. It um, was put out there by a blogger named uh, Northwest or NWAV guy. Uh, great blog, great design. Uh, basically we have one op amp per channel that only provides the gain, okay? And then we have our um, volume control. And then we have two op amps per channel that their only role, they don't provide any gain, they only provide power. So this thing has controllable gain, very quiet, and tons of output power. This thing sounds awesome.
I love it. It's a great circuit, um, even with the um, nine volt battery. This thing sounds awesome. I highly endorse it. Um, it was just a few too many components, honestly. I wanted to be able to fit our little headphone amp kit into a stomp box. And with this thing, I had trouble getting the right circuit board layout for that. And I just think, even though we want the headphone feeds going to musicians to be to sound as good as possible, it's not a super, um, critically, uh, super critical application for noise um, and so we did, I, I felt like it was a little bit overkill in terms of fidelity. Um, but I think I, I wound up with something that sounds, to, to my ears, just as good with just a couple less components. So what I did, uh, wh what I wound up doing, is just taking these two chips per channel and putting them in parallel. And they're providing both gain and output power. So I've got two chips pumping at the same time. I've got plenty of output power, but we're, we've got less components here. We only have two integrated circuits to worry about, not as many resistors to set the gain, etc., etc. I'm really happy with this little circuit. I think uh, we could easily get a kit out there for under 30 bucks with a printed circuit board and a dedicated case and everything, and uh, it's gonna sound awesome. So I don't even know what I'm gonna call this yet. Um, no plans there. What my plan is, is to make the circuit board modular. So you could have one amp in a case and have an awesome headphone amp for under 30 bucks. Bam, done. Uh, you could also daisy chain four of these things in terms of power and their input and have a really kick-ass headphone distributor box for, let's say you could have four channels for about $100. Um, so I'm really excited about this. This is the direction I'm headed. I'm going to work on the circuit board layout today. Um, let's see, while I'm developing this, I would really appreciate your feedback about what you value or what you would like to see in a headphone amp design. And um, please stay tuned. I appreciate you watching. And uh, yeah, leave me comments here or at DIYRecordingEquipment.com, and I would love to hear from you. Thanks a lot.